So you want to swing easier and hit it further. I'm sure you probably hear this all the time that uh, we want to have the effortless power in the swing. Now, I can tell you one thing from just oh, tons of personal experience. If you execute things correctly, like what we're going to go over in this video, that is absolutely attainable. And it, it's more or less just understanding the key principles of, of how we're going to transfer energy into the ball, which is efficiency, getting the club head to enter into the ball correctly from the right angle, also with some easy speed. That's one of the things that I'm going to show you in this video is one of my favorite, uh, my favorite drills for building lag in the swing. So what lag is going to do, um, and it, uh, just so that we have a very clear understanding of this, it's going to do two things. It's not only going to get us more speed, more energy that we can put into the ball, it also sets us up to attack the ball at the correct angle. So if I take the club back, and we're going to do some drills here parallel to the ground, and I just go straight to the ball without any lag, it's very difficult for me to compress this ball. Now, if I just throw in just a little bit of lag, now I can get on top of that ball no problem, and I can see this beautiful angle coming down into the ball. It doesn't take much, but if it executed correctly, and even if you wanted to get a little bit more lag, we can put even more efficiency into the ball. So this is what we're gonna get started with, this drill on how to build lag in the swing, and it's um, something I call the float load. And we can do, we're gonna start off this with half swings, get the, get the motion, and then put it all the way up into the full swing. If you follow this and you execute the feel, the sensation we're gonna go over here, is guaranteed gonna give you more speed through the ball with less effort. So what we're gonna talk about first is how we build lag in the swing, which is gonna be a very simple concept. If we take this club parallel to the, to the ground and we have the extension of this club, so that you can see this done with an alignment stick all the time. I can actually even grab an alignment stick here so that we have a very, very clear look at this. So if you've seen any of my other lag videos, I always like to make sure that we understand this concept first. When we go into this parallel position, the extension of the stick needs to move away from my arm in transition. That means when the hands stop going back and start going forward, this stick needs to move away from the arm. So if my hands don't go forward, the stick is going to go down. As my hands go forward, the stick is going to go down. That's going to be lag. That's a wrist set lag in transition. The club is lagging behind the hands. Very important to understand that concept. Now, the float load is the feel that we're going to do to get this lag. So what I want you to do is I want you to stand straight up and down. And what we're going to do is we're going to, just like you have when you were a kid, where you were like maybe swinging a baseball bat or a club or anything, and you're going to feel this club get weightless in your hand. So what I want you to do is lift the club up. You can feel the weight of it. Then I want you to kind of let the club float up in the air. Go ahead and throw the club head up in the air a little bit and allow the hand to come down. You'll feel at some point, this club's gonna feel weightless in your hand. This is what we call the float load. The club's floating in transition. You can see I have no, almost nothing. I can actually just put the tips of my fingers on this club and the club gets weightless. That's the sensation we're gonna use here. It's the float load. Again, it's one of my favorite drills. And uh, I tell you, every time I do this, I end up absolutely just pounding the ball because I'm feeling like I'm swinging really easy, but the club head is just flying through there. So what we're gonna do, First and foremost, we're gonna, we don't even need a ball at first. We're gonna take this club parallel to the ground. I want you to do that same thing we were doing with the one hands there, is I want you to feel the weight of the club head there, then I want you to go ahead and throw the club up into the air. With the, and, but I don't want your hands to move. We're just gonna throw the club up into the air, and we're just gonna do that a few times. Now, when you throw that club up in the air, I want you to get a good feel for how that club's gonna go up in the air. A good thing to do at this point, just a little extra bonus, is maybe curl the knuckles down a little bit to square that club face kind of getting that, those knuckles to curl, but we're gonna throw that club up into the air, and then once you see that club start to go up in the air, I want you to unturn your body and allow the hands to go forward just a little bit. So we're gonna throw it up and turn. So throw it up in the air and turn. And we're gonna get a good feel for, as that club is going up in the air, we're gonna unturn our body. That's the float load. If you're doing this correctly, the club will feel weightless in transition. That'll mean at some point here, if I throw this up, I almost feel like I don't feel the weight of the club until I kind of stop. So right here when I'm demonstrating it, I don't feel the weight until now, until I stop. It almost feels like there's nothing back there. That's gonna be the sensation. So we throw the club up, throw the club up and move forward. Then I want you to do start from the ground, take the club up, throw it up, move forward. Take the club up till it's about parallel to the ground, all in one motion now, up and move forward. We can take some nice little easy swings and then all of a sudden we can start feeling 
that weightless transition. And if you have that weightless transition, that club will lag behind you. Now what I want you to do is get a, get a ball involved here and hit some very nice, easy shots. First and foremost, feeling the float in the backswing, feeling the weightness, weightlessness in the backswing. So we're gonna take a nice little easy swing here. Just a nice little chip shot. Again, this one flew 10 yards right here. That's all we need. And we're gonna feel that weightlessness. So in that transition, I felt almost nothing. Now, you could, even there, I already could feel that I could easily move through that ball so much faster. So what we're gonna do now, once I got a good feel for that transfer, I'm gonna start putting a little bit more energy into this ball, but I'm not going to feel anything different in transition. I feel, still wanna feel that float load um, in transition. So I wanna feel that club being nice and light. Once that club is nice and light, I'm just gonna fire through with the body and allow everything to take care of itself. So there, I really didn't feel like I did much to it. I just kind of unturned a little faster. You can see that total distance was 131. Well, with the eight iron, it is just unbelievable how much energy you can transfer into this ball uh, when you allow this efficiency starts to take over. The wrists can really, really add some juice into the swing, but they have to be done correctly, very important. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit more speed into this with a half swing and just cut, again, this is not even full. I'm not trying to kill this ball or anything. I'm just going to allow myself to just make kind of a normal speed swing. So the first one was an easy chip shot. That one, I just try to put a little bit of speed in. This would be kind of like what I would do on the course for like normal speed with a little bit of the float load. So I'm gonna feel like I go parallel. You might go a little bit further than that, but I want you to always kind of feel like the club is parallel and floating around parallel to the ground or maybe right around waist height level. So just a nice little easy swing. Okay, tugged it just a little bit, but still a ton of energy in that ball. So that total distance right there, that's only like maybe like 10 yards or no, 10 feet left of the target there. So not too bad whatsoever. 166 total distance with an eight iron. That is just absolutely pounded and that was a half swing. Like I said, when I shoot these, uh, these um, lag videos, I just tell myself all the time, I need to just keep working on this because it is just incredible because when you can swing easier and get that kind of efficiency, it becomes way easier. Because if I can swing easy and hit it farther, it's gonna be, I'm gonna be able to beat the player that swings hard uh, so, uh, every single time. So let's just say for instance, if you're swinging easier and hitting it past your buddies, you're, there, you're gonna beat them every single time because they're having to work twice as hard to hit it the same distance. It's just very, very cool. So now what we're gonna do here is transfer this into the full swing. Now, we know when this club's parallel to the ground, that stick was moving away from the arm in transition, so I'm getting that float load. When I go to the top of the swing, I still want that stick to move away from my arm in the float load. So I'm gonna feel like I start to unturn, but that club, I'm gonna allow that club to float. I'm gonna feel that nice effortless transition. In tra I still wanna feel that weightlessness. If we don't feel the weightlessness, then we're gonna have a really hard time from the top of the swing making sure we make the correct move. So just nice, easy feel from the top. Get a nice easy swing and all I'm gonna be feeling here is that nice weightlessness in transition. Now there we go, man, that felt incredible. So we got 188 carry, 194 total distance with, with an eight iron. Guys, I'm telling you, I don't know why every time I work on getting that float load in the backswing, I get that little bit of tr transition. It is just wild how much speed that, that, enter, that transfers into the ball. Uh, it, is, it is one of those things where when you don't feel like you're swinging that hard and you can transfer it into the ball because the technique is correct, it is almost like you're just unbeatable out there. So what I need you to do is very, very important. That is make sure when you're working on this float load that you're not doing the one thing that you probably think you should be doing, which is this move that I see players do all the time where they feel like they have to pull down in the swing. If we do this, we're negating the proper transition, meaning we're going to steepen out the club shaft. This is a move that a lot of players, they even feel like they're shallowing while they're doing this. But if you're feeling this in the swing, I'm gonna highly recommend that you check out the bonus video we're gonna go over um, at the end of this video because if we steepen out the shaft, everything, this whole float load, everything like that becomes absolutely negated in the swing because there's so many compensations that happen from there. Steeping it out puts it over the shaft and we have to stand up and do all this and we can't even begin to think about loading the club up like this. So head instructor and owner Clay Ballard has a great bonus video that's gonna show you what that move is and exactly how to fix it. If you couple up 
executing this float load correctly, which is lagging the club properly with this sensation of weightlessness. If you pair these two up, it's gonna be absolute, uh, like, like a chemical explosion when that, face, when that club face hits the ball. So I highly recommend checking that out. Make sure you click on the iCard that's popping up in the screen right now. If you don't see that iCard, that's fine. You can click on the link below. Um, in the description below, it'll take you to the same place. Be sure to check out that lesson and we'll see you here soon. Now the bottom line is that if you pull this club down to ring that bell or pull the hands more from the inside, what's gonna happen is you start to rush your downswing from that pulling and that can throw off your sequence. And we all know that once your sequence gets off, that is gonna be the root cause of all your problems. Now, maybe you're being outdriven way too often or you're terribly inconsistent with your strikes. Some of your shots are heavy, some of them are thin, some of them are off the toe, and then the next ones are way off the heel. Now you end up way over in the trees, you're in the tall grass, or maybe even the hazards all day long, and it really comes down to this. Clay, how in the heck do we fix it? Well, there's some good news. Well, there's only two things that you need to learn. First, you need to learn to shallow the club rather than pulling the hands down and getting the shaft in this steep position. You see, there's another way that the pros do this, and once you start to get that club on this shallower plane, more from the inside, then you pair that up with the right way to square the club face. And once you put these two things together, everything starts to fit in your swing. Now your buddies will start to get a little bit jealous because you'll start hitting solid, longer drives, time after time, and round after round. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the E-slot technique. Let's walk through exactly how to do it. So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and take a swing to the top and get in a really good position. I want you to feel like your weight is mostly shifted to your right side and that your hips and shoulders are nice and free. I don't want to be locked up here. I want my knees to move, my hips to move, and that's going to allow me to swing my shoulders very nicely. Now, one thing that most people get wrong when they swing to the top is they don't get this tilt away from the target. So instead of being straight up and down or leaning to the left, I want to be slightly tilted away in what I call the stable fluid spine in my top speed golf system. Okay, so now that you're at this great position at the top of the swing, what I want you to do is instead of pulling those arms straight down or ringing the bell, that's gonna get the club shaft steep and get this elbow kind of flapping behind your body. I want you to do something very specific. I want you to take the tip of your elbow and move it in a specific way. Now, not this small bone on the inside of your elbow, but I want it to be right here at the tip. And here's what I want you to do.